Hello again and welcome to another edition of Southern Country. Hi, I'm Herb Sutton and welcome to the show, my friends. Today I'm very lucky to have Aris, the recording artist, Carolyn Dawn Johnson on the show. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Believe me. Let's talk about Dress Rehearsal. Dress Rehearsal is my latest album. Yes, it came out last year and um, it's the title track is just all about life and realizing that it's not a dress rehearsal and that it, this is the real deal. It comes one time around, this is the show, you don't get to do it over again. So just kind of reminiscing, remembering to live life as much as possible to the fullest. Okay. And how about you know, come, a couple other songs, Head Over Heels? Uh, Head Over High Head over, Heels? Head Over High Heels. Head Over High Heels is a really fun song just about um, when you fall for somebody and you're falling in love. It, just everything seems exaggerated. Everything seems greater, more beautiful, and you're not just head over heels, you're head over high heels. And that's the Go truth. that extra step. Well, I'll tell you, them high heels will get you. That's get a right. guy every time, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> How about an emotional song like uh, I'll Let You Go? I'll Let You Go is um, a lot of different people take it in their own way as far as the story goes, but it's a story song, and it's originally written about my brother who uh, we lost yeah. a few years ago. And um, he helped me drive through the mountains to college and got me set up and was one of my best friends. And so it's about having to let somebody go that you love. And nobody ever wants to have to do that, but sometimes it happens. It happens all the time. Yeah. How about the one with Keith Urban helping you out? Die of a Broken Heart is one of my go. favorites. And Keith Urban uh, sang harmony on it, played the guitar solo. And uh, that was a song that I had written right before I went on tour with Keith. And we were touring across Canada at the time, and we had some other dates. And at the end of the show, we would um, do this sort of little acoustic set, this kind of acoustic -y encore. And I started playing that. It was brand new. I had just written it, and he would sing with me. And the audience would just really respond to this song. So it was the last addition to my album, Dress Rehearsal. But that song seems to have a lot of meaning for a lot of people because everybody, once you feel what it feels like to have a broken heart, mm. you just don't want to go there again true and you've heard of some people sometimes you know when there's people who've been married for years maybe one passes away and then the other one just kind of you know that was their life partner passed away and soon after yeah passes away times. soon after because they just kind of don't feel like being there anymore that's very true and uh so we when my girlfriend shay and i wrote this song we, right. we were thinking about all these different things and how painful it would be to actually to have a broken heart how about the one with amy grant helping you amy grant yeah she's sweet Amy Grant is really, really sweet. Yeah, she's, a, she's a hero of mine. I just, she was a great songwriter, still is, mm -hmm. great singer, and um, she lives in Nashville and yeah, sure. was a childhood favorite of mine. And this song is called Life As We Know It. Yes, ma'am. And it's all about um, a sort of a camera snapshot of my happiness and my relationship. It's like just a few moments of um, bliss, I guess, and, and it's, just talking about the mundane things of life, but it's a sweet thing. Would you consider it autobiographical? I would consider it autobiographical. And um, I saved that song for her to sing on when I invited her to sing on my record, sure. and that was the one I knew I wanted her to sing on. And when she came in and listened to it, she said, uh, you know, I can totally relate to that song. Mm. And I said, I knew you'd be able to, because I go. knew she was really happy married to Vince. Sure. And, and um, so she had her, her own way of I, identifying with that song. All the songs that are on this album were, were recently written, or then go back to earlier writing. That's a good or? question. Um, there's a couple songs on this album that do go back seven or eight years. Okay. Um, one of them is called Just Another Plane, and the other one is called Squeezing the Love Out of You. Yes, ma'am. Just Another Plane is a story song that's uh, originated from the idea. I was uh, traveling on a Greyhound bus, actually, and I was entering Calgary, Alberta, and I saw these planes flying in and out of the city, and I started imagining all these people driving and scurrying around the city to go mm, pick up their loved right, ones, sure. and how to me, these planes were just another speck in the sky, no big deal, yeah. but to someone else, it was somebody very important to them, and uh, that that's what spawned the idea for that song, Just Another Plane, and then I actually cut that song for my first record. Did you? We didn't really love what happened with it, never got the budget to go back in at okay. the end right, and sure. redo it so it didn't make the first record so we put it on the second so it's a pretty old song and squeezing the love out of you actually was recorded by another act years ago they didn't quite get off their feet their own dreamworks their names were redmond and Vale, but they recorded it them. and um 
they recorded it and did a great job of it. Just uh, their record didn't get a, you know, its full chance. And so I always kind of thought, well, someday I'm going to put that on one of mine. And about he's mine, but your husband? He's mine. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. and it could be about anybody. for anybody who right. you sure. know is proud of the person that they're with. Sure. But yeah, it was definitely spawned of being. Um, proud of the person that you're with and how fun it is. Uh, we got a slightly bluegrass one called Simple Life. We'll show the video in a few minutes, but let's okay. talk about it. Simple Life is just a really fun song. I come from a small town on a farm where life seemed pretty simple, but really we did a lot of stuff, you know. We did our chores, we had skating parties, we had skidooing parties, we rode horses. It was just a great life. and. At the time I was making this record, some friends of mine gave me that song, and it seemed like it was the perfect sort of sister or brother to the song Dress Rehearsal, because mm -hmm. Dress Rehearsal is sure. about finding the time to make the most of life, and part of that is getting back to the simple things in life. So, simple life makes me feel good, makes me smile, and whenever I play it on stage, it feels like everybody else has a good time, too. I can relate to just what you said, because I'm a farmer myself. You are? Yeah, born and raised, 50 years of it. Good for I you. Know, I know what it is. Been uh, there and done it already. Yeah, it's nice. It's I a like nice it. life. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't. I would, wouldn't hesitate to do it over again. Right. It's totally different than growing up in the city and walking to basketball courts and baseball, you know, fields. Yeah, and everything. didn't have all of that. Not at all. Just a totally different lifestyle. It is a different lifestyle. I just went back home recently and played in the area, and it was it was really sweet to go back there and see it and kind of go, wow, I grew up here. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a, it was. Pretty out there, yeah. just a lot of a lot of space and not a lot of people. Good and feeling, though. It was a good feeling. I love being in the city now too, so I've kind of had yeah, the best of both there worlds. Because, but I like I prefer to live a little outside the city, so I'm not right in in it. But I have the option of being in it whenever I want. All the songs on this album illustrate knowledge that is only acquired through personal growth. True or false? I would say true. I thought this was pretty nice when I read even the melancholy uh, tunes project a positive message from a soul that has learned to appreciate life. Oh, that's interesting. That's I, wonder, nice. I wonder who said that. I don't know, but it was, But you know what, I, I, I like that because... Um, I liked it too. My record company president at one point said to me, he's like, you know, all of these songs, I mean, they, even though there's some sadness, he said this about my first record yeah. first. He said, you know, there always seems to be like this, this uh, hope at the end of it or this you know, this positive thing near the end where you feel like, well, it's okay, I'll make it. And I said, wow, I didn't even notice that. And he said, you don't do it on purpose? And I said, I don't know, I just, because I write from right. personal feelings and experience and that I'm always looking for the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm always believing and hoping that things are going to turn out for the better no matter what. I think it just can't help but come through in the songs. The light at the end of the tunnel got to be a green one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's the difference between Room with a View and Dress Rehearsal? As far as what has, as far as your changes or have any changes taken place, and what will the fans see as a major difference between your two albums? I think there's some growth definitely from the first to the second record. The first record is a lot of longing and searching mm -hmm. and heartbreak, and yep. uh, whereas the second album has a lot more joy and and, and self awareness and. Sure. Um, you know, even with dress rehearsal or God doesn't make mistakes, mm -hmm. some of those songs, yeah. and and you know, even like Die of a Broken Heart, even though it's a super sad song, it's also no, you know that that person's been through it already. You know, I've gone through it, and that's why I'm saying that. So you, there is an acquired wisdom in the second album compared to the first one. A music. How about instrumentally? Instrumentally, I think they're. Um, I think the first record's probably a little more organic. Okay. And. Um, has, oh gosh, I don't know. The second record's, I think, just feels a little tighter and spunkier. So the instrumentation has a lot of energy to it. Did that have something to do with you getting married? Did you kind of more of a joyous, more of a... You got you married know, in 2003, if that's I remember right. correctly. You know, it could be because I got married, who knows? Because I think just... Uh, you try out different things, your ears change, your ears are, start being in tune for different things. Like this record now that I'm, I'm making a third record right now, okay. and um, I'm just finding that things are starting to sound a little bit different again. Hmm. Because you get used to a certain thing that you do, and then you want to explore other territory. Sure, why not? Always got to grow. That's right. Another video. Which one do you want to show? 
Uh, let's show I don't want you to go. Say something about it that the audience will never know unless they hear it from you right okay. now. I don't want you to go is my rocking out video. Me on stage having a good time, which is what I like to do when I play with my band. You write a lot of songs. Yes, I do. Um, do you, you write with co-writers too? Yes. Do you like to write with co-writers more or do you like to do something on your own as far as writing? Depends on the song. Sometimes the songs need to be written by themselves. Okay. Most of the time these days I do a lot of co-writing. It makes me accountable to the to the, okay. the time slot in my day. It's so much easier to um, show up to a writing appointment and hang out with your friend and come up with something than if you say, okay, I'm going to set this day aside today uh -huh. to write and just focus on that and yet the phone's ringing and there's bills to be yeah, paid sure. and you want to go to the pool and all this yeah. kind of stuff but there's still songs that I um, have started that haven't necessarily been finished yet but I know that they're gonna have to just be me songs that have to right. get done and then there's the other kind that sometimes you just know that maybe someone can add another dimension to this to bring it to where it needs to go. Sometimes two heads are better than one. Huh? Sometimes two heads are better than one. When you write songs for a CD, do you have a common thread in mind that ties all the songs together as you write the songs for that CD uh, before you take your pen in hand? No, I do not. I do not have a common thread. I think the only common thread is just my, my emotions and my take on life. Okay. But um, when I put a CD together, I don't exactly know what shape it's going to take until sure. it gets kind of more in the middle of it. When I start, it's usually with a batch of songs that I feel really passionate about and uh, that my label feels they agree with that it can be on the, la on the record and so it's this big thing and then once you get that first batch going then you start piecing it together and then it sort of takes on its um, real uh, theme I guess you could say okay. and then, then you start, you finish it out with I don't know if I'm making any sense at all, but it's it's just the process. I don't usually go into it and go, okay, this is going to be the theme of this record. Right, okay. I'm going to write for this. All I, love songs, all drinking songs. You don't use right. that theme at all. I don't do that. Right, I just okay. I just let the songs be what they are, and then I hopefully piece them together as the record comes. How many together. songs do you write before you pick out your twelve for this album? Oh gosh. How many? I'm always pulling from the old ones too, okay. so uh, I write probably about fifty songs a year. Oh, that's not bad. Well, you know, not always. Right. Actually, I would say right now it's probably about 30 to 50. How do you pick the order that they're going to be on a CD, like 1 to 12? Picking the order for a CD it's is sure. a I never asked that thing. question to anybody. Yeah, you know what? You go by, there's a lot of different things that I go by. Mm -hmm. What keys are the songs in? You don't okay. want, if so you have four songs that are in the key of E, you don't want them each beside uh, each other. Okay. Um, tempos, okay. maybe like a certain riff at the end of a song goes really good into a riff at the beginning of another wow. song. Like I, I test out all these different combinations, That's believe up. it or not. And sometimes Room with the View was very clearly to me, it was a journey, that album from the first song on the album was called Georgia. It was about a woman having to leave her relationship and start right. over and it was a very painful but strength um, in this person's life and then watching her journey go from song to song two where she becomes just another girl to song three where it's she decides to think positive about the past relationship and sure. if you listen to that album that one was really I sequenced that one kind of like as a woman walking through life so uh, the second album dress rehearsal the theme was more about learning about life and happiness and and uh, that was more about sounds and what songs went in together mm -hmm. and, and also contrasts as well. So uh, every you, artist probably has their own way that they do it, but that's how sure. I do it. Do you get involved in um, the video making of it, of that song? Absolutely. Do I you? love being part of the video making process. I, I go back and forth with the director I end up choosing um, constantly with ideas. I usually have some ideas of my own for the video, but usually what you do is you solicit the song to say four or five directors that sure. you're interested in working with. Sometimes you have one already in mind. You let them listen to the song, they come back with their ideas. Now if any of those fit something that you've been thinking, that's usually what I'll do is I'll go with them. Now if none of them have anything to do with what I do, I try and pick somebody that I feel like is passionate about their idea and mm -hmm. see if we can meld it. Right. Do you have to live it to write it to sing it? For the most part, yeah. 
But so. some of the stories I tell are not about me. Okay. So it's okay. But I, I know somebody that has been in the story that I've told. You love to write. What, how, how, what was the fastest song you ever wrote? 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? That got recorded. Don't let me die of a broken heart. How long did it take you to do that? That probably takes about half an hour. No kidding. Rolled right out of the pen. Rolled right Came out. Came right out. Yeah, it was crazy. It maybe took a hair more than that, but I don't think so. Wow. Because we had this long conversation before it ever happened. Oh, all right. So. We had this conversation, and then all of a sudden I just started, uh, I keep having these disturbing right. dreams, and it just went on from there. Wow. That was a fast wow. one. What was the first song you ever wrote? I have no idea, no, because I... my mom said when I was a little, little girl, I used to go in my bedroom and write songs and That's come so. out. Wow. I'd go, Mom, listen to this one that I made up, sing it to her, run off, and never yeah. remember it. I, I had Merle Haggard on the show quite a few years back, and his, he told me that country music is a common man's poetry, true or false. I think it's true. I think it's true. I think Merle's made When you write a song, okay. is it, um, do you believe in the theater in your mind? Um, yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, um, it depends on the song, though, I think, you know. Okay. But uh, you're always visualizing things. You're trying to paint as honest and visual picture as you can with right. a song. And you only have three minutes to do it, and well, so it's tough. I know. Hank Williams did it in two and a half. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how he did it. How about Shelley Wright, your first number one song, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, yes. for Single White Female. That's right. You wrote it and... Shelley Wright was my uh, first real big hit. She recorded Single White Female yes, and uh, took it all the way to number one. And I remember it sat at, in the top five for like eight weeks because Lone Star was sitting there at number oh, one yeah. with Amaze. Amaze, And forever. it was not moving. All right. And, and we just were like hoping and praying not only for ourselves but for her because she'd never had a number one either. I and I was on tour with Martina at the time and I remember we were on the west coast somewhere. So the time was two hours earlier. And when we got in, it was about 9 o'clock or something, um, when we got off the bus in, on the West Coast. And I turned my phone on, and there was like 18 messages. Wow. And I thought, oh, you know what? It went number you, one you today. Knew it, huh? <laughs> I knew you, it was a Monday. Because I knew that everybody was calling me to congratulate me. And sure enough, I turned on my phone, and, and Shelly was on there, and a ton of people just saying, you went number one today, because Monday's chart day. So right. it's pretty exciting. We had a big party, all of us, Shelly, uh, Shay, who I wrote it yeah, with. Yeah, Shay wrote a co-writer, Good time. Sure. Uh, some of the charities you work for. Some of the charities, we always do a lot of St. Jude's stuff. Um, country music is really involved with St. Jude's, which is a great hospital in always been. Memphis. Always been. And uh, I also am involved with Children's Miracle Network, yes, which is another you're children's the, organization. You're the ambassador for that. Which is, um, I am an ambassador for that. It really works great for me because I'm Canadian. Right. And we have Children's Miracle Network in Canada and the U.S., so I'm able to help in both countries. We're going to wrap up. Put another video in. Which one do you want right. to talk about to wrap up this show? This is my first video that I ever did. This is called Georgia. And um, so it has a lot of, a big special place in my heart. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Carolyn Dawn Johnson wrapping us up right now in Southern Country. <laughs>